Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this part 2 video, we're going to be taking a look at how overclocking the HBM2 memory scales when the core is increased as well. In part 1, we found out that overclocking the HBM2 brings performance increases across the board for all of our games. On average, we saw a performance increase of 2.5%, like you guys can see right here. In this part 2, we will be looking to see if increasing the core along with the memory yields a larger performance increase. Just like part 1, all these games were ran 3 times. The average was then taken and that's the number you see in the FPS columns over here. So let's get to it. We have a lot of really interesting info to cover. Alright, so just like in part 1, I'm quickly going to cover what each column means. Starting from the left, we have our settings column. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just the settings I used uh, running the benchmark. And next to that, I have the type of test I ran. Everything that shows bench has a built-in benchmark. Everything else that doesn't has a brief description of the area or zone I used in the benchmark. Next to that, we have our game column and our API used. And then we have our FPS average columns, one for 1000 megahertz and one for 1200 megahertz on the HBM2. Like I mentioned earlier, these numbers right here are based off of three runs. The average was then taken from each of those runs and that's the number you see right here. And then we have our percent gain from 1000 megahertz to 1200 megahertz. And down below we have our average. And then I have three extra columns in the end I added. The first column right here is simply showing the percent increase from stock to 2000 megahertz without the memory overclocked. Next to that we have the overall percent increase. So this is 2000 megahertz and 1200 megahertz on the HBM2 compared to stock. And then our last column right here is simply showing our FPS increase between our stock Radeon 7 versus 2000 megahertz core and 1200 megahertz HBM2. And then lastly, the bottom rows right here are just the averages of the columns up here. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's start comparing some of the numbers. So everything from these three columns right here are bonus numbers I added because I figured some of you guys might be interested in seeing some of these uh, results. But the main comparison we were trying to do in this video is between this row right here and this row right here. So as you guys can see right here, on average, we get about a 2.5% increase in performance, increasing our HBM2 to 1200 megahertz at stock uh, core clocks. And then on the other side, we see a average of almost 3% increase when our core is overclocked to 2000 megahertz. So it's definitely not as big of an improvement as I thought it was going to be, but it definitely improved slightly. So we've gone from 2.5% to 3%. Now feel free to pause the video and take a closer look at the numbers. I know there's a lot of data here to look at. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys both of these columns graphed out side by side similar to this one right here so as you guys can see i added the original red columns from up top and then i added the uh, 2000 megahertz core columns next to those as you guys can see here the percent gain didn't change a whole lot compared to our stock 1800 megahertz core clock apart from a few games that saw significant increases shown over here on our left side Although the percent increase remained the same, this translates to slightly higher FPS improvement since our overall FPS is also higher with the core overclocked. The core and the HBM2 play really well together. If you want to squeeze the most out of your card, you should definitely be overclocking both. And then down below, I simply plotted our stock FPS averages next to our overclocked numbers. You will notice some real nice performance increases across the board. Across all games, we saw a 10% increase on average in performance. I was considering doing a part 3 with the core set to 2.1 GHz and the HBM2 at 1250 MHz. So let me know down below if you guys like these type of videos and or general thoughts on what you saw here. Thanks for watching guys. Peace.